Scanning in football denotes an active head movement where a player's face is temporarily directed away from the ball to gather information in preparation for subsequently engaging with the ball. The current knowledge of visual gaze behavior in sports, and football in particular, is primarily based on studies of eye movement registrations in laboratory settings using eye tracking equipment. These studies have provided empirical knowledge about football players' gaze behavior through the examination of fixation durations, fixation frequencies, and fixation locations in different video simulated tasks and viewpoints between participants of different skill levels. The aim of this study was to examine the scanning in an 11 vs 11 real game environment using mobile eye tracking technology. More specifically, we measured the duration and information of the player's scanning behavior. Methods We recruited four male central midfield players, aged 17 to 23 who played for two different clubs in the Norwegian Premier League. All players were part of the first team squad of their respective clubs. The midfielding selection criterion was based on empirical data showing that central midfield players have higher scan frequencies compared to other playing positions, presumably because they are literally surrounded by multiple sources of information which makes constant scanning activity essential for performance. Data was collected during two 11 vs 11 matches played with standard association football rules. One match was an internal training match within the squad while the other was a friendly match against a local third division team. The participants were each equipped with an eye tracking device to allow them to familiarize themselves with the equipment and to ensure that a stable calibration was possible. This process lasted approximately three minutes for each participant. In total, two of the players were recorded for 20 minutes each, and two players were recorded for 10 minutes each. The difference in duration was due to the match duration and the duration of the fitting process. The eye tracking device used to register gaze behavior when performing scanning was the Tobii Pro Glasses 2. We also used a camera to film the match from a platform situated on the sideline approximately 5 meters above the ground near the midfield line. Based on Gibson's conceptualization of exploration and Jordit's operational definition of an exploratory search, we defined visual exploratory scanning as an active head and eye movement away from the ball that temporarily causes the ball to fall outside of the participant's visual field. The player presumably performs this motion with the intention of looking for information from teammates, opponents, the referee, or space that is relevant to the development of play. Only scans that were performed during open play were analyzed, with the exception of scans that were initiated within the two seconds leading up to a set piece being taken, as this was viewed as an important time for information gathering. Additionally, in accordance with previous studies scans were only measured when the participants were not in possession of the ball. All scans detected from the four players were used in the analysis, totaling 869 scans. The data collection focused on two main properties of scanning as dependent variables, scanning duration and scanning information. Scanning duration was defined as the duration of scans in centiseconds, as measured by Toby Pro Lab scanning duration was measured from the first video frame in which the ball was not visible inside the eye tracking video to the first video frame in which the ball once again became visible. Scanning information was the collective term for the number of players visible during the scans. Scanning information was measured in three different ways. First, the number of players inside the entire video frame during the movement phases of the scan, which was defined as the number of teammates and opponents found inside the eye tracking video frame during the two movement phases was determined. Second, the number of players inside the entire video frame during the stop point of the scan was also measured. This was defined as the number of teammates and opponents found inside the video frame at the moment, moment in which the player had the last stop point of the scan before moving his head and eyes back towards the ball. Third, the number of players found inside the foveal circle, during the stop point of the scan, was also measured. With regard to independent variables, we measured those that provided additional context to the scanning duration and scanning information at the exact moment of the initiation of the scans. For independent variables were used to provide further context for scanning duration, control or pass, air or pitch, ball action, and the presence of fixations. 
The following operationalizations were made with reference to other players, as we did not measure scanning when the participants had possession of the ball. Control or pass refers to whether the scan was initiated when a player had control of the or when the ball was on its path from one player to another. Control was defined as having the ball close to the player's body after the initial receiving touch. Air or pitch refers to whether the scan was initiated when the ball was on the pitch or up in the air. Ball action refers to the action that was undertaken with the ball at the exact moment the scan was initiated. This was divided into five categories. Lastly, to measure whether players foveally fixated on an object and or space during their scanning, we measured the presence of fixations using the Toby Pro Lab fixation filter set at a 120 milliseconds threshold. Additionally, two independent variables were analyzed in order to provide a scanning context in both scanning duration and scanning information, playing phase and player to ball distance. The playing phase was split into attack and defense. Attack was operationally defined as the period when the investigated player's team had control of the ball, it ended when they lost possession to the other team, the ball went out of play, or a free kick was awarded. Defense was operationally defined as the period when the investigated player's team did not have control of the ball, it ended when the opposition team lost possession to the investigated player's team, the ball went out of play, or a free kick was awarded. We operationalized that a team had control of the ball when a player made two or more touches or was able to make a controlled pass or shot using his first touch. If neither team had control of the ball at the initial tie-on of the scan, it was categorized as other. Player to ball distance was defined as the number of meters between the analyzed player and the ball when a scan was initiated. This variable was subsequently divided into two groups, near and far based on similar previously used distinctions. Results The players in this study performed 869 scans with a mean duration of 0.3965 seconds. Of the 869 analyzed scans, 835 were performed when the ball was on its path between two players, pass, or when a player had control of the ball. Initial analyses revealed that players had longer scanning durations when the ball was on its path than when the ball was under control by a player. In order to analyze the duration on scans in initiated during different contexts further, we divided ball action into receiving or dribbling touch, during pass, control, no touch and moment of pass. A test revealed significant differences between the groups. Post hoc. Pairwise comparisons with adjusted p-values showed that significantly shorter scanning durations occurred when the ball was controlled by a player compared to when the ball was on its path between two players after an executed pass. No significant differences were found between the other groups. However, a trend was found suggesting that longer scans occurred during a receiving or dribbling touch compared to when the players had control of the ball without touching it. Additionally, we looked at the duration of scans initiated when the ball was up in the air compared to when it was on the pitch. A test revealed a significantly higher scanning duration when the ball was in the air compared to when the ball was on the pitch. Scanning duration, player to ball distance, and playing phase. To test the relationship between scanning duration, playing phase, and player to ball distance, we conducted separate man Whitney U tests using scanning duration as the dependent variable. The man Whitney U tests revealed that there was no difference in duration between when the scans were conducted in the near and far conditions. Furthermore, no difference in duration was found between defense and attack. Scanning information, player to ball distance, and playing phase. To assess scanning information, the first set of analyses investigated the number of teammates and opponents inside the video frame during the scans. The figure compares the summary statistics of teammates and opponents according to the three ways of measuring scanning information we used in this study, movement phases, stop point, and foveal circle stop point. From the graph below, we can see that in the movement phases of the scans, the players most often had zero teammates and opponents inside the video frame. This result should be seen in light of our operationalization of the movement phase which excluded all players that were visible inside the stop point of the scan. Furthermore, the players never had more than seven teammates in their video frame, 
They did have both eight and nine opponents in their video frame, although this happened infrequently. In contrast, the highest count found at the stop point of the scans was one to three players for both teammates and opponents. Lastly, compared to the movement phases and the stop point, the foveal circle stop point of the scans showed a lower number of players. For the foveal circle stop point, zero teammates and opponents were most frequently found. No more than two teammates and three opponents were inside the foveal circle during the stop point of the scans. For the movement phases, the analysis revealed a significant main effect for the playing phase, a significant main effect for number of players, and an interaction between the playing phase and the number of players. No other main effects or interaction effects were found. These results show that during the movement phases of the scans, more players were found inside the video frame during attack than defense and that there were, in total, more opponents than teammates inside the video frame during the movement phases of the scans. More precisely, while in defense, no differences could be found between the amount of opponents and teammates in the video frame. In attack, there were more opponents than teammates inside the video frame during their scanning behavior, Similarly, the analysis for the stop point revealed a significant main effect for the number of players, and the interaction of the playing phase and number of players. However, there were no main effects for the playing phase, or player to ball distance, nor was there any other interaction. The finding that more opponents than teammates were found inside the video frame during the stop point only occurred during the attack phase. For the foveal circle stop point, a main effect for the playing phase, and a significant main effect for the number of players were found. No other main effect or interaction was found. Again, more opponents than teammates were found inside the foveal fixation circle, however, there were significantly more players found in defense compared to attack. This result was the opposite of what was found in the movement phases.